it's a, always a pleasure to welcome Dr. Jainar and Vyas. Uh, very, I will definitely first call him a, a very old member of the AMA family. I think uh, that's a true statement, Jainar and Vyas, because so many years of your association and um, a very interesting topic, water crisis and possible solutions. Uh, yes, you know, in our uh, country, it's, it's sort of a paradox. I mean, uh, there is a lot of progress we have made, but you can see that um, in the, like the rural areas, there are, there are more mobile phones than toilets. And in the urban areas, there is 24 hour internet, but then there are water crises, southern cities, even few, few years ago, Bangalore, which is the IT capital of India, there are so many IT companies and a lot of technology, but they had a severe water crisis. So anyway, this, this, I will leave, leave that to the expert. And before I hand over to Dr. Jaina and Vyas, I will uh, definitely give an introduction. Most of you in this audience know him in Gujarat. He's a very eminent person in economist, thinker, and an able administrator. But I'll give a short introduction, especially for the youngsters. Well, by training, Dr. Jainar Vyas is a civil engineer from the MS University, and he also holds a master's degree in civil engineering from IIT Mumbai. And thereafter, he forayed into the management studies. He holds a postgraduate degree as well as a doctorate in the same law, and also got a degree in law. That's, that's a lot of academic achievement. And he has been recognized as an eminent thinker on public administration, economics and finance and been part of the public life, you know, for over, uh, you know, 30 years, you know, and um, uh, he's a conferred as a distinguished alumnus for his outstanding contribution to MS University, academia and society. And some of the milestone um, uh, achievements in his distinguished career include a noteworthy contribution to the Gujarat's industrial development that's 75 to 90 as a policy planner. And I remember as uh, one of the first persons who led the Index B, Industrial Extension Bureau. And Jainar and I also remember that thick red book. I think it was Managing an Industry in Gujarat, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, used by many students across and uh, policymakers. And then uh, finally, uh, the, a great contribution, you know, he guided India's largest multipurpose irrigation project, that the Sardar Sarovar Nigam as its chairman. And later on, as the uh, minister during the most critical stages of this project and a contribution recognized by the International Commission of Large Dams by awarding a gold medal in, for the year 2003. And as I said, Jaina Ranbai has been associated with the AMA fraternity for a long time. He headed our extension services committee for many years. He has been a regular speaker for you know over three decades in our annual uh, budget, uh, you know, comments uh, on the next day of the budget each year, along with um, Professor Bakul Dorakya and our Mukesh Bhai Patel. And recently, you've all seen him as a very, very active anchor in the Gujarat GSTV, Gujarat Samachar TV, each night, you know, bringing wonderful um, participants and very interesting topics where there is a very healthy, you know, the topics are very relevant and there's a very healthy discussion and debates from the experts who are from their respective fields. So I don't want to take much of your time, friends, a wonderful topic and welcome all of you. And once again, a very warm welcome to you, Jaina Ranbai. And as mentioned before, we'll have your talk, you know, whatever 45, 50 minutes you take, even it's five, 10 minutes, more, no problem. But we'll have at least a five to 10 uh, minutes question answer session. And as it was mentioned, you can put your questions in the chat box so that it will be moderated by the AMA office. And uh, over to you, Jaina and Bhai, please. Thank you so much, Divesh Bhai. Good evening, uh, viewers, and uh, uh, thank you for your kind introduction, Divesh Bhai, and uh, I'm grateful to Ahmedabad Management Association for this very important subject. Uh, friends, I would like to begin with uh, narrating some of the issues India will be facing in the years to come. And these issues, how they are handled, and uh, how uh, ultimately the outcome is achieved, would have a considerable bearing on the future of India. 
uh, I would carefully avoid the external relations. Uh, that is not the subject of today's discussion. But within the country, you will have the issues which are important to me in, for the coming years and which need a competent handling and taking them out of the current mass is the economy itself. Uh, after independence, this is the first year when Indian economy is going to see during the financial year 2021, uh, uh, first time in the history, a negative nominal GDP growth. It has four times happened, GDP growth has been negative, but then it was adjusted for inflation and then it turned out to be negative because inflation was higher. Nominal GDP was not negative. This is for the first time you are going to have a nominal GDP which will be negative. And perhaps for the first time you will have a total figure of GDP growth which will also surpass all past records. The second issue that the country may face will be education, youth and unemployment. Unemployment today is uh, 44 years highest and the education has failed, I would say, squarely to create employable uh, graduates. They, they turn out graduates, the products which are not readily employable or a product in excess of the demand and supply and the requirement, requirement by the market. The third is fragmentation of the agriculture land and agriculture becoming non-remunerative. The agriculture size of the average farm in 1951 when we wrote our first five-year plan was around 4.5 hectares. From there, down the road, as indicated by the Vision 2030, uh, by the Agriculture Research Institute of the Minister of, Ministry of Agriculture Government of India, the average farm size would be 3,000 square meters. And therefore, you, if you are a student of economics or management, you will understand that you will be dealing with a farm size which is per se non-viable. So this nonsense of minimum support prices is not going to sustain agriculture and the farmer and there is likely to be an unrest and also a food security threatening problem in the years to come as far as India is concerned. The fourth in line is water security, uh, which, with which we will deal in a little larger details. The fifth is law and order. Uh, uh, you know, you must have read yesterday's newspapers. The people committing suicide is today uh, a, a sort of an alarming situation. In this country, every 40 minutes, a Farmer commits suicide. Uh, 40 uh, minutes every fa a farmer commits suicide, and 55 minutes a student commits suicide or a youth commits suicide. So the uh, situation is really alarming. Then uh, the last but not least is uh, the, the skewed gender ratio. You have 922 girls born against 1,000 boys. And if you look at the present population, it would turn out to be in millions. So you will have uh, a very difficult job ahead as far as matchmaking is concerned. You'll, not, you'll have many people who are forced bachelors and they don't have a girl to marry with. So this is, this is the situation that is staring in our eyes. And in that scenario, with that background, let us uh, get on to the subject. Uh, as you are aware, the human body is made out of first Panch Mahabhutas. Uh, means five major basic elements. Jal, that is water. Agni, fire, vayu, akash, and prithvi. Of this, water con constitutes almost two-thirds of our body. Almost same area on this globe is covered by water. Therefore, it could be said that water is life. Jal is jivan. Rahimji has very aptly described this. He says, Rahiman pani rakhyo. Rahiman pani rakhyo. Bin pani sab sun. Pani gaye na ubre moti manush chun. 
uh, incidentally, this is the title of my recent book, uh, Bin Pani Sapsoon. If you don't have water, in Gujarati it is said that the person should be really dashing, Pani Dar. So you don't have a, a, a human being who is that uh, dashing and has the quality of leadership. Moti, Pearl, grows under the sea water. So if there is no water, the pearl cannot grow. But the pearl is valued depending upon how panidar it is. So it is without water, again zero. And third is to the Ato. Now that is very symbolic. It means agriculture. It means the vegetation. It means the, the, the greenery and the kind of environment that we talk about. So if you don't have water, there is nothing of this available to you. Now, if you have no water to drink and no food to eat, therefore, no survival also as well. And because of this, Vedic Sanskriti has worshipped Jal. And it has always... Uh, uh, sort of uh, treated it as one of the devatas, Jaladevata. Now, some major civilizations also, obviously, therefore, they prospered on the banks of uh, rivers like Ganges, Sindhu, or Nile. These were great, most prosperous and progressive civilizations, as we know from the archaeology that is available to us today. And we believe that there is a lot of water on this world. Uh, yes, that is true, if you count it in that way. 71% of, uh, of the earth is covered by water. 1.6% of the total water resources are underground. Let us look at what is stored. Now, as seawater, 97%. As glacier and snow, 2.4%. As rivers, lakes, ponds, etc., sweet water sources, only 0.6%. Friends, now you will remember that stanza, water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. Now, you are increasingly going to pressurize this 0.6%, which is a sweet water reserve, which is available to you for exploitation. For the entire population on this globe, therefore, it is important that this resource, which is, which is almost like an elixir of life, is used judiciously and is used with care and concern. This is a, a finite resource. It is not an infinite resource. It is not huge. It is meager. And obviously, therefore, Per capita availability of water with the population, the way it is growing, and India, you should remember, friend, we are likely to cross China by or before 2025, as per the world population report. We will be the most populated country in the world. And I'm confident we will make it because in anything else we may succeed or not. This is one area where we are bound to. Uh, sort of overdo and perform beyond expectations. So if we cross China before 2025, you should not get surprised. With this, uh, friends, in 1951, let us come down to the bare facts now. 1951, per capita availability of water in India was 5,177 cubic meter per person per year. I would repeat. 1951 is the landmark year. First five year plan was being written, and availability of per capita water was 5,177 meter cube per person per year. It has dwindled now, friends, to 1,200 meter cube per person per year. So it has gone down almost to 25% of what we had when we were paying or scripting our first five-year plan. Let me look at the water availability. 
in in last few years and what are the projections like uh, like uh, as far as per capita availability is concerned 1951 as i mentioned to you 5177 there was no gujarat at that time so uh, gujarat uh, separately i have no statistics but 1961 uh, the country's average was 4467 meter cube per person per year gujarat 2468 meter cube per year per person 2015 Countries average dwindled to 1,567 meter cube per person per year. Gujarat 7,038 meter cube per person per year. And remember, friends, any average which is less than 1,000 meter cube per person per year is a water space condition. So you are living in a state which is already a water space as late as 2015. 2025 what will happen to this is country's average will go down further to 1393 meter cube per person and gujarat's average will go down to 601 meter cube per person so if at all anything can happen both to the country as well as the state uh, you are going to be dealing with a sharply decreasing per capita water availability add on to this don't get misguided by this average of 1393 meter cube per person per year as far as india is concerned water is not uniformly distributed the basins of ganga jamuna brahmaputra ravi bias jhelum satluj that is uh, tributaries we ultimately make sindhu uh, they have two third of the water of this country and roughly one third of the area and one third of the population so in this country one third of the area and one third of the population enjoys two third of the water resources of the country so their average may be far more higher and the rest of the states which form two third of the area two third of the population roughly have one third of the water resources and as a rough guideline friends if you draw a vertical line from jammu and kashmir down to the tamil nadu any state it passes through is a water space state that that is rough rule of thumb that you can follow and it will definitely pass through gujarat it will pass through rajasthan it will pass through haryana it will pass through karnataka it will pass through maharashtra and it will pass through by default kerala which is not a water air state but then the tamil nadu which is always uh, fighting with uh, karnataka for kaveri waters therefore we have to understand that gujarat is a water stress state and it is going to have by 2025 which is not that far 600 meter cube per person per year average now friends again coming to gujarat also the same problem Gujarat also doesn't have this 601 average distributed uniformly throughout the state. In Gujarat, if you take the area uh, from Damanganga, that is near Wapi, to Mahi, that is near Vasar, that area has most of the rainfall, and that area has almost all major rivers in this country. so that area again which is roughly about 20% of the area of the country has 70% plus water resources and the rest central gujarat north gujarat saurashtra and kutch put together account for only 30% of the water resources of gujarat so these are the areas going to be my friend devesh bhai was talking about the water the scarcity in uh, bangalore uh, you have worse water scarcity in many of the villages and you would have seen many problems but for the narmada which gives you 0.8 million acre feet of water which supplies drinking water to 14000 villages plus 13 urban areas plus and therefore in gujarat fortunately 
you are not seeing any problem as it would arise elsewhere as a drinking water for man as well as animal. So you should be grateful to Narmada. There are many flaws in Narmada implementation, but at least this part of Narmada has done a lot of good to the state of Gujarat. And therefore, Gujarat is going to have a, a worsening water problem in, during the years to come. That we should be very clear about and we should always understand that you are going to deal with a water problem which is not going to be so comfortable. Gujarat is part of the uh, India and uh, similarly, it also behaves like India. You should not be surprised that two-thirds of the water resources are in a particular zone. Now, in Gujarat region, I have already explained to you what is the problem. The another problem is rainfall. Rainfall is not only skewed distribution. You will understand one thing, that New Delhi and New York gets the almost same annual rainfall. But in New York, it is round the year trickle. And therefore, a lot of greenery you will see around. In Delhi, 80% of the rainfall is precipitating in 20 days during the year. So when there is a torrential rain, there is flooding, the, the trees fall, are uh, falling down on the road, roads are obstructed, there are queues, uh, areas are inundated, and number of problems are created including the traffic disruption the rest of the year so 20 percent of the rainfall get the delhi gets during the rest of the year now rest of the year delhi is making before haryana for releasing yamuna waters so delhi being a capital has this peculiarity which the capital of united states doesn't have fortunately it's it's a whether or it is god's grave gift as far as the uh, precipitation is concerned rainfall is not uniform uh, the story is uh, not no different in other parts of the country you receive even in gujarat uh, bulk of the rainfall if you take the rainy season and count or, uh, around 20 to 25 days account for 80 percent of the rainfall and rest of the days you get about 20 percent of the rainfall so when there is a rain when there are torrential rains, downpour, uh, uh, you you have a problem. It is it is sure that you have a problem because the the situation is not created for this. The Ahmedabad roads is an ideal example. But I don't blame alone the workmanship of the roads, though it could have been better. But the reason I personally believe is that the kind of rainfall that you receive. But there is a surprise. That why the same thing doesn't happen in certain areas like the whole city of Ahmedabad. Flooding doesn't happen. Old timers have built such a good road. Baikaka was once upon a time the city engineer of Ahmedabad. The constructions during those days, even if you look at Ashram Road, you don't find so much of an erosion or a problem. But then we are people, you know, we believe in next birth and we believe in Ahinsa and Kshama. So therefore, you know, what you get is what you deserve. And you have to deal with the roads where you are sort of traveling the distance where most part of the uh, distance, uh, you know, you travel where you, where you have to travel in little bit of road. Most of the time, there are gadas. So this situation happens because of the torrential rainfall, of the water logging, of the water which is creating problem uh, of drainage. And ultimately, it gets drained away. You don't have uh, water uh, unless you get the water from Raska Weir, which is a Mahi source. Ahmedabad doesn't have water. Even your water riverfront is flooded because of Narmada waters. Now, in that kind of a situation, never be under any mis uh, sort of an illusion that you are going to face future, which is not going to be so kind to you. And if it is not going to be so kind. You know, there are friends who argue that, you know, we should stop every drop draining out and going to see that is another nonsense. The nature has created the rivers 
for draining certain amount of water to the sea because if they don't drain that water to the sea you know the the, the coastal area they will have salinity increase problem because the salinity in the sea water will increase and second thing marine life which survives in 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 this kind of a mixed water situation will die so this being a situation to talk about not a drop will go to the sea is another nonsense and we have seen what can happen when you don't get baruch is known for hilsa fish hilsa fish from baruch coastal area is very very tasty and it is very popular but this last two years because the dam was not filled up because there was no release from the dam the sea water went as deep as 65 kilometers in the narmada and you found dolphin in 35 40 kilometers inside the uh, narmada's uh, upper tributary up, upper flow or upper uh, drainage uh, path so this is what it can happen it can lead to salinity increase it can lead to destroying the fertility of your land it can lead to the the uh, marine life which thrives in this kind of uh, mixed uh, lesser salinity waters uh, totally getting finished so there is a need that some water must flow to the sea so that you are not degrading your seawater environment you are not creating a situation by which your salinity ingress will create barren land across the sea coast and a state like gujarat which is one one third of the coastline of the country cannot afford to subscribe to this hypothesis so that being the case you know what is next you know if you are finding that for next two days uh, this uh, the, there is some problem with the um, uh, pumping system and uh, the motor has burnt in the society what you will do you will store water so the option is that you should store water the solution is you should store water as far as possible there you know look what kind of storage facilities we have uh, in our country compared to the international uh, 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 comparison is russia stores 6103 cubic meter per person australia 4733 cubic meter per person brazil 3145 cubic meter per person spain 1410 cubic meter per person morocco 1111441 four times 1 cubic meter per person china 1000 cubic meter per person south africa 753 cubic meter per person america more than 500 cubic meter per person but we should not forget that uh, more or less uh, america has perennial rivers and therefore uh, storage being less for them should not be a problem india has 200 cubic meter per person so your dams store 200 cubic meter per person friends compare it russia 6103 australia 4733 and india 200 meter cube per person per year per, per, per capita that is the story and therefore during the worst years our dams also run dry that compounding the crisis that is created and that is why during the crisis years we are having a twin problem on hand one is the 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 environmental de degradation or a degeneration and the second is problem for irrigating the agriculture now this being the situation we must increase the storage of the water and not necessarily so by building large dams you know you can by adapting to other methods so we we must uh, do that and one of these methods is village ponds or village lakes uh, during sajira gaikwad's regime there is a lake which is huge lake built called chimnabai sarovar near visnagar now what nagar 
if if there are average 10 inches of rainfall in taranga hills this get, gets filled up but now thanks to the democracy and thanks to our sort of uh, uh, be belief that dem democracy means a passport to misbehave these more than half of the land of this is in the hands of land grabbers so gone is the advantage that sajira has created now it is it, it is it is only 40% which is capacity available and uh, some of the even the uh, catchment area drains have been blocked so this is how we deal with our uh, uh, natural resources bhai kaka who was one of our greatest civil engineers and instrumental in building sakar uh, barrage he says that during gaikwad state just before the monsoon on um, uh, an appointed day the entire village will come out they will clean the village pond uh, and repair the banks if there is something which is broken uh, also clean up the inward drainage inward drains and remove any uh, vegetation etc that is blocking the inward flow of water and there was a specific system there was a smaller pond before the main pond so first the water will come to the smaller pond is is the, the the silt will more or less get deposited and it will then overflow to a spillway into the major pond now this because of this system no village had a problem of water not being available to them so we must again revive this system we must also revive the system of check dams khet talavris and understand one thing we specialize in standardizing and creating models now check dams may be good for areas which have hilly terrain the areas which have sort of uh, um, uh, uh, um, rocky uh, foundation available saurashtra uh, the uh, upper reach of north gujarat that is balaram uh, and ambaji areas uh, it's the hilly areas in sabarkanta hilly areas elsewhere in the northeastern belt of gujarat but they are not a uniform solution you can't build check dams in the areas which are having sandy soil with high permeability no water is seen unfortunately when we standardize everything you know it is like that famous joke that if you send somebody to search for a 16 years or 18 years old girl uh, for marrying uh, a, a zamindar's son uh, if there is no such uh, aged girl available all right nine years two girls will do now this kind of a simple arithmetic is something to which our psyche is trained you know we are being made fools don't get don't blame the government i don't blame the government you are fools because you don't think and because you don't think in a democracy you get the government to deserve for a population which is headless which doesn't have a rational thinking and which is not sort of willing to commit themselves to some kind of a study or research you know this could be the outcome uniform programs and then merry making by those contractors and political leaders and babus combined there's a book called from raj to rajiv written by or authored by mark tully there is a chapter in that book friends if you get an opportunity read that chapter that chapter is titled neta babu raj it says corruption cannot end. happen unless the, the neta and babus they are hand in gloves and increasingly the netas will come of a caliber where without babus they cannot function and this is an ideal combination so neta babu raj is a absolutely uh, home breed model uh, in our democracy for corruption but that happens because you don't think don't blame anybody if the society is like that if you take a bucket full of water uh, by a bucket made out of gold from kankaria another bucket made out of silver from kankaria another bucket made out of uh, tin from kankaria 
and an earthen pot the quality of the water will be the same and therefore unless society improves you don't expect any miracles to happen as far as the public life improvement is concerned because your netas your babus your uh, traders your leaders your management experts all come from this society they are takariya ka pani same hai aur pani ka to arth hi wo hota hai pani re pani tera rang kaisa jisme mila de lage us jaisa so this is what is happening and then coming to the users the 90% of the water friends is consumed by agriculture no time it is discussed there is a water crisis we are always over focused on industry that industry is the industry is, has another crime to uh, uh, defend but 90% of the water in this country is used by agriculture and you don't care even tuppins the they the farmers do not agree with you and you are not willing to educate them that the plant in the root needs moisture it doesn't need the water logging which prevents aeration as a result more than what is required used by the farmers results into the salinity ingress and also decreasing yield in their crops there is no crop rotation and as a country we have no decision to be taken that these crops we will not grow you understand when you we read the export of sugar you understand it is not sugar you are exporting water from a water deficient country now are you prepared for that sugar can grows at 48 inch plus delta where in average agriculture grows at 8 to 10 inch delta except paddy paddy again needs 24 inches plus delta now when you talk of exporting sugar and pride yourself that we are exporting sugar i think nobody can be a stupid idiot like you you are exporting water you are not exporting sugar similarly you are one of the highest meat exporters in the world you are not exporting meat my dear friends you are exporting water when are you going to realize this and therefore agriculture has to learn to grow for crops which are non water intensive and use methods which deliver the water to the crop in the utmost economic manner what can be the outcome i will tell you narmada waters only half a million acre feet half a million acre feet you don't strain your brain for understanding million acre feet only half a million acre feet point by 5 million acre feet goes to rajasthan rajasthan has made a law that if you want narmada waters you have to compulsorily use it through drip irrigation as a result friends from half a million acre feet of water they are able to create irrigation potential of 2.5 lakh acres we have gujarat share is 8 million acre feet. 16 times larger than rajasthan and what is our performance 7 to 8 lakh acres this is the most inefficient use of water just the governments which are vote hungry populist governments who care more for the present day and have no sense of thinking about the future they must understand the philosophy that you are you have not inherited the earth what you are doing is you are borrowing from the minds of from the mouths of future generation therefore as a child i have seen in sitpur area water was at 65 feet in the wells today it has gone down to 1200 feet so my father gave me water at 65 feet i am giving water to my children at 1200 feet and maybe they will give water to my grandchildren at 1600 feet or 1800 feet or the depth which is not possible to tap the water now this is what has happened because of reckless use of water you do not understand that water is a scarce resource and therefore friends first you have to understand that also understand that industry uses 3% but industry has another blame to shield they are the people who pollute the existing water sources and also 
underground water sources. There is a study which shows in the whole belt from Ahmedabad to Wapi, the, 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 the underground waters are of different color. The, the total aquifer is polluted. Now, if this is the situation, whom are you going to blame? Our generation. It has done it, deliberately done it. It has elected governments who are stupid and stupid and stupid and stupid and who have cared for their gaddi rather than the public at large. But then you are to be blamed for that. You don't vote, you don't speak what is the reality, you don't study, you don't apply yourself and you are guided by stupid information which is the outcome of today's social media campaigns. When are you going to understand that unless in a democracy you get the governments you deserve and in a democracy if you are not responsible you are never going to be able to solve the country. J.F. Kennedy said very rightly that don't ask what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Now first step is educate yourself. We are educated illiterates. We harbor beliefs which are non-realistic. We are not concerned about whatever is happening around. We are neither concerned about what is happening in the world. We believe what social media teaches us. And then you are going to face one day a situation which will be a disaster. It is a disaster in field of unemployment. It is a disaster in the field of economy. It is a disaster in the field of water. It is a disaster in the field of internal security. It is a disaster in the field of the dwindling size of the uh, farm and uh, agriculture becoming non remunerative. So many areas at a time, if they are going to pounce upon you as a population, you will be thrown into a whirlpool of anarchy. This is what is awaiting you, friends. And water will be one of the reasons for that. I'll not be surprised if water becomes the reason for the states fighting amongst each other. Already Karnataka and Tamil Nadu are fighting. Already Delhi is fighting with Haryana for Yamuna waters. We have problems with Madhya Pradesh, partly our creation, partly their creation. But then time will come when each state will be compelled to say that we will not permit a drop of water from our state to come. What will happen to you then? You must know, friends, that this is your duty to come forward and economize the use of water. And therefore, I will start uh, dealing with, in next few minutes, complete dealing with what is going to be the uh, solution because i talk of all the problems also you might have bothered uh, you or you might be a, a, a sort of educated that this fellow is telling about all the problems and he has no solution uh, no it's not like that. there are solutions the first is realization and acceptance of the fact that water is a scarce resource so if you are uh, uh, taking bath with shower on uh, while you apply soap to your body, you are a social criminal. If you are brushing your teeth and the tap water is running in the basin, you are a societal criminal. Accept, realize that water is a scarce resource. Now, don't tell me that, that by my stopping the tap, the, the water is not, problem is not going to improve. Don't worry about it. At least you are conveying that awareness to your next generation are we doing that when i was a water resources minister friends i found that my visitors were leaving half the water behind and it is sometimes our great educated friends and big industrialists and big big people in the society they think that they should sip the water and then leave it behind now this again is a social crime so I put one big uh, bin in the corner and asked my peon, 
that whatever is the leftover water pour it in that and you'll be surprised that every day out of the water served to my visitors 60% of the water was left behind and wasted the next thing i did was i made the glass half the size small i ordered for the small glasses i said if the visitor is so thirsty he will ask for uh, uh, another dose of water but if he is not thirsty don't do that don't serve water which he doesn't need now do we understand this it is not going to change the situation according to you no it is the beginning of change, changing the situation because people who look at this experiment will get educated your children will get educated your guests will get educated tell them that water is scarce if you can take bath with one bucket of water do that and this don't get sold to the funny ideas that in the old time we had tanks with below every house and rain water was collected and we should go back to that during those days friends it's a good idea i i i am all for it. but understand one thing during those days there were no gutters your sewage flows on gravity and therefore amdavad is supplied with about 140 liters per day of water about 50 liters per day must be sufficient for taking bath uh, for um, uh, cooking your uh, food and everything rest 100 liters per capita is used for flushing your toilets and putting it in the gutters because these drainage lines are designed on the gravity principle so if there is no sufficient flow as a civil engineer i can tell you there is a formula q is equal to i into a q is the quantum of flow is dependent upon the gradients multiplied by the area so if you have a larger area and lesser gradient you will need more flow more water to be put into your gutter lines now this is the problem we don't realize and therefore first thing the solution to this problem is recognize realize accept that yes there is a problem there is a water shortage if you are wasting water stop it stop it for heaven's sake now the second is that economize by two ways number one use every drop of water that is falling from the sky friends do you realize that if you take total area of amdavad and the rainfall that has come down so far it is more than 1 million acre feet of water that has fallen on this city and that water is equal to more than what you get out of narmada that is 0.8 million acre feet which amdavad alone gets why can't you have north south east west four major uh, sarovars where this water is drained permitted to wait for a while and then like kakaria put into that lake we have created lakes without drainage and we are such an irresponsible and dishonest tribe that even where there are uh, lakes like vastrapur uh, or other lakes people clandestinely into those lines so the lake waters will start stinking for these in the entrance of the lake of this water so all the muck and sewer gets collected in that drain the lake runs dry and at the time of first rain when the pardis are still not broken that backflow comes into your house imagine what is the content of that water now this is our creation dishonest people absolutely no social responsibility we believe that everything should be done by the government the government should do it free of cost and we only have a humble and mundane duty of 
be adding to the population figures of this country. Even God cannot make this kind of a democracy survive. So you can, Singapore was founded and totally imported water. It did not have the water source of its own. It has created now systems by which it is exporting water to Malaysia. Orange County in America runs a project from tap to, from toilet to tap. Every drop of water that goes into the sewer line gets recycled and delivered to you for as pure as a drinking water. Can we not do it for even one city? We talk only of the huge uh, uh, projects. Somebody wants to convert Mumbai into Shanghai. Somebody wants to convert Surat into Tokyo. And somebody wants to convert agriculture in Gujarat into Israeli agriculture, which is first great nonsense. Right? The Israel has communes and the farm size, which is in excess of 5,000 acres. You have 99% of your farmland is less than one acre. What are we talking about? What kind of comparisons do we have? Just for making foreign trips of Babus and Nitas. We get ourselves sold to these ideas. We have mortgage our brains and see you, you call yourself educated. At least if not to anybody else. We don't ask these questions to us. The second is economize. Economize on the use of water. Like Rajasthan, where they made it compulsory that if you want Narmada water, you must have drip irrigation. Farmers of Disa area are innovative to use only sprinkler and drip waters. As a result, in area like Disa, which is a water scare, scarce area, it grows a huge crop of bajra. It grows a huge crop of potatoes. There are examples. You know, it is not that I am talking out of the head. But then, it is up to you to do that. So, economize on your use of water. Third is reuse and recycle. I have given you the example of Singapore. I have given you the example of uh, uh, Orange County. There are examples from Israel also. But these all countries have people who are low abiding. The problem in our country is we are people who take pride in breaking the rules. And more uh, uh, important and more designated a person is, more is his capacity to break the laws. If I and your car is going, and if there is a red light, it will stop. But Commissioner Saab's vehicle I've seen, well, it doesn't matter. The driver also doesn't care. Commissioner Saab also doesn't care. And so is the case with the ministers. They are not exceptions. Even if their numbers must be coming in the camera, if my number comes in the camera, their numbers also must be coming in the camera. But who has got courage to give them a notice that you have broken the law? On the contrary, this country will have almost no problem. The day if I break a law and jump the traffic signal and I am fined 500 or not putting on the mask, I am finding one, fine 1,000. Happy, you should do it. But then, if the commissioner does that, fine him, fine him 10,000 rupees. If the minister does that, fine him 50,000 rupees. Larger the position, larger should be the responsibility, and larger should be the fine. It is other way. Mahajara Gata Sapantha. Samarath ko nahi dos gusai. Tulsidas ne bola. Or hum yehi shipish mentality me jite. Now, recycle. I have given you the examples. I will not waste much time on that. So, realize the problem. Audit the use of your water. Find out how you can save the water and use the water delivery systems which are economical. Recycle and reuse. These are five steps which can help you tiding over the crisis if you can do it honestly. If you don't do it, then a disaster 
is wanting to just waiting to happen and therefore friends remember a philosopher has said that we are not in inherited this earth what we are doing is we are borrowing from the mouth of mouths of future generations it is very true friends i think i have taken enough time uh the wish why was kind enough to allot to me uh in the end i would only say that i dedicate this talk to the generation next i am a great believer in the human capability we have progressed and come this far facing many challenges to our very existence as a mankind we wish that we will ride over this man made disaster with the same spirit responsibility and capabilities thank you amdavad management association for inviting me to talk to the subject which is closest to my heart and thank you viewers for bearing with me for such a long time uh, i am going back to the ama monitoring uh, back to you divesh bhai yeah so thank you thank you jainaran bhai you have very lucidly explained the various aspects of water management you started in a very holistic style about the importance of water and you explain the status of the water right over availability of water the current issues the importance contribution of narmada and finally you gave the solutions also your five step mantra from realization economize recycle and uh, so on and without taking much time thank you very much jainaran bhai for this uh, wonderful uh, talk and we have a few minutes for some questions i'll ask radhika or somebody else from yeah. ama to moderate please please sir yeah. one or two we we have time is less so we can take only one or two questions Yeah, you can take. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Sir, one of the question is, what are the res? What is the research needed to understand the holistic situation of water in Gujarat, and who can support it, and how a uh, how a common man? So, those what, were, what? What are? What is needed? Research. What is the research needed to understand uh, the holistic situation of water in Gujarat? I and think who, everything. I think everything that one would need. to understand the water availability and the water resources in gujarat is available in a piecemeal condition with the different institutions there is an institution called valmi water and land uh, management institute at anand there is uh, an institute called geri there is similarly is an institute promoted by the uh, uh, water is the supply of women drinking water department so there are i mean the there is no dearth of data the question is that how honestly they are created we again specialize in sort of fudging the data if you are if you have a fudged data you need some research otherwise i think you need a realization not the research yeah thank you very much sir the next question is that how a common man those who are having very those who are concerned very little with this all water issues can express their views and contribute in mitigating and managing the state's water scarcity what are your views sir about it it is it is i would explain to it by a small example when the sun was setting on this earth the uh, the suraj narayan was wondering that after i uh, said there will be darkness and who will take care of my responsibility nobody came forward but there was a small dia who said sir i do not uh, uh, have the capability as bright as you are but i will keep spreading the light in the areas maximum that i can similarly if each one of us do the job of a dia rather than trying to become a suraj narayan which there are many in race in this country i think the problem could be solved and i would add to it that you must have such kind of an exposure to the youth which is the next generation and take them make them understand while their minds are still not polluted by the political ideology
Yes. Any other Thank questions, you. Radhika? Yeah, the last uh, question, sir. Uh, before that, Radhika, I've observed yeah. that uh, several comments from the chat box. Yeah, uh, many people. Paresh, Paresh Bhai and Mr. Ashwini Kumar for several comments. And you can carry on with the further question, Radhika, please. Yeah. So there is one question that how do you look at the data which says 110% rainfall this year and it's enough for two years in Gujarat? It is a first rate nonsense. You know, it is as simple an arithmetic as uh, if a five year old boy eats one chapati, the 100 year old fellow will eat 20 chapati. Now uh, this is, this is, this is the nonsense. And if anybody wants detailed answer to that, Go to my uh, YouTube. There was a discussion uh, in my Gujarat Samachar 9 to 10 show on this very issue. That uh, what kind of, you know, you can... Uh, and, and let me tell you that uh, the, the history says still the major rainfall and floods in Gujarat have come between 15th of August and 15th of September. So still you will have more rains. But then... These, these more rains may not be very helpful to you and to calculate that it will last you for two years is an utter nonsense, simple misuse of arithmetic tal arithmetical talents. Yeah, so I think so we'll come to the end of the year with this end of the questions. There are many suggestions and notes exchanged in the chat box. I think people would be able to see that. Thank you for the very active participation by, by the attendees. Yeah, Mr. Rajkumar, you were saying something, please. Before you conclude, you know, I have my book, which is as good as a total uh, the, uh, summary and presentation of the water problem, not only in India, only but focused on Gujarat. That is with the Ahmedabad Management Association. I have gifted it for the library. So, Nayar sir, the title of the book is Bin Pani Sabsoon. It, it's 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 a, a, a an account which is as recent as six months uh, old data and carries almost all aspects of water management. And I am writing a separate book on Narmada, which will take about years time. Okay, uh, thank you, Janan. But yes, I saw the book uh, the other day in the AMA library, so friends uh, who are members can take advantage or procure this book. And yes, it. Um, I'm sure, sir, you have taken a lot of pains to write this book because this requires a lot of uh, important statistics and your years of study. So once again, I thank you very much for sparing your time for this wonderful webinar and also thank all the participants for attending and their very interactive uh, comments and questions. Sir. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you so much. This is my parent organization and yes. it is always a pleasure to uh, talk to the audience through your parent organization. And I must also mention to you that uh, I was pushed into this stupidity of uh, accepting the invitation by uh, uh, our ever charming uh, Nayar Sahib, who prevailed over me that you have to speak on this subject. And he has a right to do that. So my uh, thanks and profound regards to him also. Sure. And, and, and by and large, as you said, no one refuses when Mr. Nayar requests. You know, he does it in a, such a polite fashion with all the right, you know. So... Thank you once again, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. In case you have any further queries, any further suggestions, please keep uh, visiting our website and also you can send email to AMA at that is a, our ID, email ID that is AMA at the rate amaindia.org. And please keep attending our open webinars. Hope you are finding them very useful and interactive. Yeah. Yeah. And for the younger audience, you know, we have a presence on all the various social media now. So you can even put your, post your comments on those pages also. Thank you and wish you all a very good evening. Thank you, sir. Good night. With your permission, I'll end the meeting. Yeah. Radia, sir and Vyas, sir, thank you very much on behalf of AMA. Thank you for, thank you for conducting it so very well. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Naya, sir, also conveyed he had to leave somewhere urgently. So he conveyed his regards to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. Okay. Okay. Goodbye.